Hey guys, this is Robert. I just got to uh, to rant here a little bit. Uh, this thing is driving me crazy, but I got something you need to hear. A little over a year ago, I just think about this. Long before we ever heard the term coronavirus, the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention reported that just a few short weeks of the 2018 and 2019 uh, winter season, the flu had attacked between 6 million and 7 million Americans. About half of those went to a doctor. And somewhere between 60,000 and 80,000 people were hospitalized because of the flu. The good news is that the CDE, uh, CDC announced that that it wasn't nearly as bad as it was the year before. And we're talking about 84,000 people hospitalized. In 2018, they reported 49 million, with an M, million people were struck by the flu. 960,000 people were hospitalized. And over 80 thousand, 80,000 people died because of the flu. Now, you heard that right in 2018, 80,000 people lost their life from the flu in the United States. Now, most of the victims were older people with compromised immune systems, and there were also a handful of children whose immune systems hadn't really uh, progressed fully. They're all tragic deaths, obviously, but they're all flu-related. Now, we fast forward to 2020. Today, we find our world turned upside down in what I call utter panic due to something called a coronavirus. Now, we've gone through such tragic things such as the stock exchange uh, quit a uh, halt halting trading and all this kind of stuff because the Dow Jones fell and all because the coronavirus has induced this panic in us we have taken large venues for large festivals and events who are canceling all of their programs and their shows and stuff even though the health departments have stated clearly that there's no evidence, no evidence at all, that closing events or gatherings will make the community safer. It won't. It will not. That's right. There's no evidence that all these things that they're doing is going to make anybody safer. Yet, Panic has set in everywhere. Can you believe this? That NCAA is considered having its men and women's basketball tournaments without people in the, in the stadiums. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is just in. Now they have canceled the ACC tournament. Now that's what you really call a March Madness. What are they going to do with all those tickets that all those people bought to those things? We have quarantined cruise ships. We have people considering closing schools. Even the mayor of the Japanese town where the schedule of the 2020 Olympics has considered uh, closing uh, and canceling the Olympics. But now the NBA has canceled the whole season, which probably is not a big uh, a big loss, but uh, all because one player has been diagnosed with the virus. He hasn't been hospitalized. He hasn't died. He's just got the virus. And I heard this morning that all the late talk t shows on TV are going to tape without uh, uh, audiences. Well, you know, as far as I'm concerned, they can do away with the whole show altogether. That's just a thought. 
But what I'm trying to tell you here is what we see is hysteria, total panic, total pandemonium. And you would think that the coronavirus is nothing less than the second coming of the Black Plague, but it's not. If you look up on the CDC's uh, uh, COVID-19, I reckon that's what they're calling it now, at a glance, statistics showed that there are 938 cases of coronavirus in the entire United States, with 29 related deaths. Now, every death is tragic, I know. But there's only 29 people in the United States that's died from this thing. Out of 330 million people, we've had 29 deaths. And does 29 deaths out of 330 million people warrant billions of dollars in Wall Street losses and cancellations of, of festivals and loss and revenue from those uh, uh, those festivals and things being closed. Look how much money Greensboro is going to lose from not having NCAA, I mean, from the ACC tournament. Just think how much that town will lose. Uh, c community gatherings, I just read, I just read that the Governor Cooper says, don't gather any more than 100 people. <laughs> well, what does that do to our churches today? In 2018, nearly 1 million people, 1 million people were hospitalized in the United States with a flu. And 80,000 of those died. Not 29, 80,000. Games weren't canceled. Festivals thrived. Concerts went on. Flights continued as they were originally scheduled. Everybody flourished because we were doing well. Business as usual, despite the fact that 80,000 people died. Why weren't they closing down society in response to those 80,000 people like they have the 29? Why the madness now? Why the total hysteria now? i tell you why. Because mainstream media is quite sure that fear sells. It doesn't matter what the facts show, fear show, uh, sells. News media has taken the sale of fear to a new low with the uh, coronavirus. The CDS, uh, CDC told us that 49 million Americans were sick with the flu in 2018. The same CDC tells us only 938 were sick with the coronavirus. 938. Nearly all of these 938 people whom are high-risk, frail individuals, usually with some type of respiratory problem. Now we can find, can we find CNN and NBC and all those people reassuring us with that context? No, of course not, because fear sells. Instead, they're reporting how the outbreak might, might affect the whole world's health and wealth. In some hastily assembled study, the best case scenario, they say, is that the death toll is going to be 15 million people and the global GDP loss will exceed 2.4 trillion U.S. dollars. And that is the best case scenario. It gets much worse from there. The Associate Director of Science and Technology of the Good Food Institute, whoever they are, sent out their worries in a lengthy Twitter thread that suggests that hospitals will be quickly overwhelmed with patients and that all available hospital beds will, beds will be filled by about May 8th. She says 10% of the patients will require an ICU. Really? Seriously? 
Are you kidding me? Let me repeat that. Every single hospital bed in the United States will be filled with coronavirus patients by May 8th. Give me a break. Give me a break. You know, and you know as well as I do that's never going to happen. Never going to happen. I'm not a science. I'm not a scientist, but let me put my two cents in there. It's not, it's not going to happen. No, they won't. Did you know that the people are predicting at least 15 million deaths and overflowing hospitals are the same people that told us the polar ice ca uh, caps would completely melt by 2013? Well, guess what? Here's a reality check for you. According to the official government data from the National Snow and Ice Data Center, the Arctic sea ice is once again growing and current 2020 levels exceeding eight of the previous 10 years. So don't believe everything you hear. I, I, look, did you see this? <laughs> we know that Congress loves spending our money, don't we? And they didn't let us down this time either. They're, they're all up in there trying to make a difference. Congress rushed to approve $8.3 billion to fight the spread of the coronavirus. And they bragged, each one of them bragged about who had come up with the highest dollar amount. Well, they were pre uh, pressed for exactly what the money would be spent on and how it would stop the sickness. Now, you can throw money at anything if you want to, but, you know, how are you going to throw it makes a big difference. But the, mem the members are stumbling here. And by the end of the week last week, the House leadership was suggesting that perhaps maybe congressional staff should work from home and to avoid getting sick. And so, and some of the funds that they had just you know, verified that the taxpayers were going to have to pay would be used to buy them new phones and new computers. Now, only in D.C. would the fight against a dreaded disease entail buying congressional staff new telephones. The mainstream media is really hot on its case here. A curtain headline in, the New York Times says virus keeps spreading as governments clamp down. Now, see, that's very clever for the mainstream media because that, that fear works two ways. It's a double dose of fear. The people who have, made, who have been made petrified in fear of the disease are now freaked out by the government making demands on them. It's all about fear. Fear, fear, fear. And I ask, oh man, I wish I had the ability to make a difference. I ask, stop it. Stop the hysteria. Stop the panic. Stop the grand ideas intended to demonstrate that, oh, we're doing something. Stop the fear. Stop talking about it every single minute of every single day. Stop with the the gloom and doom. Now, I even heard that churches are considering closing their doors and Catholics now having not having communion or even mass for that matter because they don't want to spread a disease that they don't even know is there. So my, my question here to you today is how should we as Christians be handling this? See, there's nothing wrong with being concerned about the virus. I, I'm totally uh, hip with being concerned, but we don't have to live a life of fear. What are the people here? I just went from, I just left from Walmart. What are the people in King, North Carolina, worried about a disease that ain't nowhere near them? Why are they stocking up on Clorox and bleach and Paper towels and toilet paper in King. I don't understand it. But see, we have to understand that we don't, we're not supposed to live a life of fear. Fear is anti-faith. It's anti-God. God hasn't sent this fear into our lives. The devil has. 
And God is love, and, and love casts out all fear. And if God lives inside of us, there's no place for fear in our lives. Psalm 91, which is so reassuring in general, has the one disturbing verse embedded in it. It says, a thousand shall fall at my side, and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh to thee. And that's the scripture that I'm standing on today. This virus is not coming to this house. Has the media got you all stirred up in fear that you'll get this new disease? Let's look at some of the more comforting verses in that same 91st Psalm. It says, you and I can dwell in the secret place of the Most High and under the shadow of the Almighty where nothing scary can reach us. God can be our refuge and our fortress, strong and trustworthy, and our very present help in troubled times. The same song also tells us that God will deliver us, deliver us from the snare and the noisome pestilence. That's what we have today is the old noisome pestilence. And the same psalm also tells us that God will deliver us from the snare. Oh, I just said that, didn't I? I find it a relief to hear that as a promise that we will not be trapped by this disease. The Bible tells us that. It goes on to say we shall be protected under God's wings and nestled on his gentle feathers. And this implies that there's no fear. There's no fear or threat in that place. There we have immunity. We have immunity not only to the disease, but to anything that comes against us that's ungodlike. Psalm 91 verse 9 says, Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation, there shall be no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling." For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all the ways. Oh, man, I love that, don't you? Can't you live on, can't you believe in that instead of all the stuff that the media is pumping into you today? And it says we are told that these angels will protect us and not even let us stump our toes for that matter. We are sure that we'll be invincible against frightening things and even trample them under our feet, subduing them with our God-given dominion. See, most Christians don't even know we have a God-given dominion. We are reminded we can call upon our God in our time of need. So I don't know why we are in all the mess that we're in, but I believe that there is a way out of it, and I think we need to calm our thoughts and turn to God, full of love and full of trust, and expecting to receive a defense, a preservation, and a tender care during this time. I believe God, <laughs> I believe God is large and in charge, and the disease is not. This coronavirus is just another, another name that's got to bow to the name of Jesus. The foundation of of uh, any pandemic is fear. But always remember, 2 Timothy 1.7 says that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but one of power and of love and a sound mind. And always remember that he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, so that we can confidently say the Lord is my helper and I will not be afraid. It tells us in Joshua 1, 9, in Deuteronomy 31, 6, and in 1 Chronicles 28, 20, basically the same thing. It says, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or dis be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And the Lord your God is the one who goes on with you. 
He will not fail you or forsake you. He will not fail you nor forsake you unto all the work for the service of the house of the Lord is finished. Amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah 35, 4 says, Say to those with anxious hearts, Take courage. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. The recompense of God will come, but he will save you. Amen. Isaiah 41.10 says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. It goes on to the next uh, 13th verse. It says, For I am the Lord your God who upholds your right hand, who says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Isaiah, uh, I mean, Psalms 34, uh, 3, uh, 34, 4 says, I sought the Lord, uh, Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. 41, Isaiah 41, 1, 43, 1 says, But now thus saith the Lord our Creator, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. How many have you redeemed today and still in fear? I have called you by name, and you are mine. Psalms 94, 19 says, when my anxious thoughts multiply within me, your consolations delight my soul. Hallelujah. Matthew 10, verse 28 says, Do not fear. Those who kill the body are unable to kill the soul. So no matter what happens with this virus, it cannot take my soul. I finish today saying, Please, as Christians, quit the panic. In media, give it a break. Just think of how this country is going to be after all the places have shut down and all the panic has done its due. All because they won't control. I'm not going to go there. That's what I got to say today. Thanks for listening. Rub it out.